Welcome to the Soul Winning Motivator Broadcast with Daniel White III. My name is Danita Evangeline White, and I am the second oldest daughter of Daniel White III. We are glad that you have joined us today as Daniel White III encourages us to keep the soul winner's fire by spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. Welcome to the Soul Winning Motivator Podcast, podcast number 92. This is Daniel White III, President of Gospel Light Society International. As always, it is so good to be with you today. The simple purpose of this podcast is to challenge you, encourage you, exhort you, and motivate you, if you will, to share your faith in Jesus Christ with those who have not yet trusted him as Savior. Even though we will share some instructions on how to witness for the Lord from time to time, we believe that most Christians do not need to learn how to witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. They just need to go and do it. So our aim is more motivational than instructional. Our soul winning passage from the Word of God today is Revelation 12, 11, which reads, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Allow me to share with you some important insights regarding this scripture passage from David Guzik's commentary on the Bible. He goes on to say, this tells us three keys to the saint's victory over Satan. The blood overcomes Satan's accusations. Those accusations mean nothing against us because Jesus has already paid the penalty our sins deserved. We may be even worse than Satan's accusations, but we are still made righteous by the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. The word of their testimony overcomes Satan's deception. Knowing and remembering the work of God in their life protects them against Satan's deceptions. As faithful witnesses, they have a testimony to bear. And because they know what they have seen and heard and experienced from God, they cannot be deceived by Satan's lies, telling them it isn't true. Loving not their lives overcomes Satan's violence. If they do not cling to their own earthly lives, then there really is no threat Satan can bring against them. If they believe to live is Christ and to die is gain, then how can Satan's violence against them be effective? Beloved, our soul-winning devotional is part 75 of our series titled What Evangelism Is from Dr. Dave Early and Dr. David Willer, soul winners from their hearts. Evangelism is sharing your story by the way if you don't have their book get their book as soon as you can uh, from where fine books are sold evangelism is sharing your story they go on to say for many of us the hardest part of evangelism is building a bridge so we can get into the gospel in an unoffensive way one of the easiest ways to do so is by sharing your testimony. Giving a testimony is nothing new. People have been doing it since Jesus began changing people's lives. Let's look at some stories from the Holy Bible. A demon-possessed man shares his story by way of testimony. This poor guy was full of so many demons that even binding him in chains and shackles could not keep him under control. He was in such misery he would yell, scream, and cut himself with sharp stones. What an awesome day it was in his life when Jesus appeared on the scene 
and cast out the demons. The demons took up residence in a nearby herd of pigs. It must have been wild as the newly crazed pigs ran off a cliff and drowned in the water below. The freshly freed man was so excited that he wanted to travel with Jesus on his journeys. But Jesus knew the man's greater ministry was going to share his story with friends. Mark chapter 5 verses 19 and 20 says, Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed, and began to publish in the capitalists how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. The Lord has done great things for all of us who are saved. Like this man, we need to tell our friends about it. Notice a woman tells her story. One day Jesus met a Samaritan woman as he paused to get a drink from a well. In talking with her, he led her to a personal recognition that he was the promised Messiah. She was so excited that she told people all over town her story. John 4.39 says, And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified, He told me all that ever I did. Other people believed in Jesus because of her testimony. Other people will also believe in Jesus Christ because of our testimonies. Notice another testifier a blind man tells his story. No one story is exactly the same. That is an important point. Jesus healed dozens of people, many of blindness, often in slightly different ways. Some he simply touched and they were healed. For one man, Jesus made mud, rubbed it in the man's eyes, and told him to wash in a nearby pool. When the man did as Jesus said, he was healed of his blindness and could see. The happy man told his neighbors about what Jesus had done for him. Word got back to the Pharisees who brought the man in for questioning because the healing had occurred on the Sabbath a no-no in their book. The man told them that as far as he was concerned, Jesus was at least a prophet because he had healed him. They did not like that and proceeded to call Jesus a sinner. To this the man gave a simple yet wise answer. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. I do not know. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. I like that. The man did not claim to be an expert in theology. He was not a Bible scholar. He was not a famous philosopher or apologist who had all the answers and all the evidence for the skeptical Pharisees. But he had the one thing they could not refute. Jesus had changed his, his, his life. Notice an intellectual tells his story. The Apostle Paul was a highly educated intellectual who was well schooled in Hebrew, Greek, Aramaic, and Latin. He was an expert on the Old Testament law and also was current with the great philosophers and poets of his day. Yet when given audiences with persons of great power, such as the Roman political leaders, 
Paul did not debate theological or philosophical issues. He simply gave his testimony. He told them how he came to know Jesus as his Lord. He shared about his life before Christ, how he met Christ, and of his life. He shared about his life before Christ, how he met Christ, and of his life since meeting Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, in our If the Lord Tarries is Coming and we live in our next podcast, we will continue looking at why evangelism is sharing your story. Oh, Holy Father, God, help us to be the soul winners that you want us to be. Help us to always be mindful, to be sober-minded, vigilant, and watchful. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, dear friend, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, uh, yet may I encourage you to get to know him today. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, that is, perish in hell, but have everlasting life. And just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God for you, so that you can be a part of the church in this life, and in the life to come be a part of heaven with God. Pray and ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart today, and he will save you. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Until next time, my beloved, please keep the soul winners fire. God bless you.